If it's going on in Will County, you'll hear it here first. 1340 WJOL. You're listening to Will County's News Talk Sports, 1340 WJOL. Right now, I want to say good morning to a young lady by the name of Lenny Rivera. Lenny is a workplace experience specialist and author of the very first book in the industry called Worst Workplace Experience. Her passion is creating work environments that enable employees to be both productive and happy regardless of where that is. Uh, Lenny, thanks for coming on Slocum in the morning. We appreciate it. Hi, Scott. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Well, it didn't take you long to become the first person to write a book on this because this is all so new right now. So <laughs> you're literally the first one in, huh? I know. It's, it's really strange. I wrote the book in 2019 before the pandemic. Huh. And a lot of the things that I was talking about in the book have really become more relevant today. Well, what gave you the the foresight? I mean, what what were you thinking pre-pandemic about all this? (laughs) It's not it's not so much for it's not like I had a crystal ball and thought all of this was going to happen. But, you know, when I I moved to the Bay Area because I have a passion for workplace experience and this in all the tech industries, this is sort of the Disneyland of all of all workplace experience. But my passion is creating an experience for employees to be happy and engaged and productive in wherever it is they call their workplace, where it is that they're working. And even back then, I mean, today we hear the word work from home all the time or working remotely and all that, but that's not a new concept. That's been around for decades. Um, And so even back when I wrote the book in 2019, I had been talking about making sure people are happy and engaged and productive regardless of where it is that they're working from. And, That is not more, there is no more time, there is no more a relevant time than there is today uh, for talking about that. So this started to happen, but I I think a lot of the the corporate leaders or business leaders or, or general managers or whatever were maybe a little bit more old school and they were like, nope, in order to get production, Lenny, we gotta have them here eight to five. Yeah, that's right. That is right. You know, I think the pandemic has been, you know, it's shaken a lot of things. Um, and it, you have to understand the way companies have been, organizations have been organized. It hasn't changed since the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. So asking people to change their perception of how to, you know, how to reconstruct and rechange their focus on a workplace, it's not easy and it's not going to be easy. But if the problem is, If you don't hear them, if you don't listen to employees, they're going to leave. In July, it was another 4 million people quit their jobs. And it's been consistently 4 million people quitting their jobs since February this Mm. year. So if if companies don't start listening to employees and shifting their perception of workplace and focusing instead of a place, but focusing on employees and what they need, then they're going to lose them. They're going to lose their employees, and and they'll find out the hard way, I'm afraid. Well, you know, just a quick anecdote here, and then I want to get into what this new workplace ecosystem is going to look like. Quick story here. Mm-hmm. Monica and I, ever since day one of the pandemic, we've we've been here. And, in fact, for mm-hmm. probably, what, month, three or four months, we were the only ones in the yeah. building, and we yeah. have four radio stations here. That That's right. It was a ghost wow. town here. Yeah. Yeah, it was a ghost town. Wow. And, and for a <laughs> while, I mean, not every day, but every once in a while, when we were having a rough day or something like that, we'd look at each other and go, you know, if only people would come in here and work, this wouldn't be so difficult. <laughs> But I got to tell you, Lenny, the more and more people that matriculate their way back into the building, I'm kind of like, I wish they'd get the hell out of here again. <laughs> True, but but so now, but now oh, I now so I'm just funny. the opposite way because I've now utilized the work from home thing too. Instead of me staying here until mm-hmm. twelve or one or whatever, I'll pop out, go do a couple of things, and go home, work for an hour or two, and feel every bit as productive. Our production here at the radio station, I think, I don't have you know all the intimate information and everything like that, but we're, we seem to be doing fine. I'm still getting paychecks, Monty. You're still getting paychecks too. So far, we're still getting paychecks. So apparently things are. Moving in the right direction, so Lexi, I, I'm you know I'm old dog. I learned a new trick. This stuff does work. 
Well, there you go. There you go. And when you talk about old dogs, I'm an old dog too. I'm, I'm a Gen Xer. And the leaders of companies are people who are either our generation or the generation above us. And we're used to clocking in, clocking out. I mean, you clock in at 8 o'clock, you leave at, you know, 5 o'clock, and that's why it's hard to change this whole idea. But, you know, the millennials and the people, the, the generations below that, um, they've, all, they've all already known that we can work remotely and we can work in this digital age. Right. Um, it's, just taking, it's just taking us a little bit slower to, to, to get with the program. With, but, yeah, well, you know, it must be interesting for you guys to have more people coming in. Yeah, it is. More people. Yep, it is. Lenny Rivera joining us. She, uh, she wrote Workplace Experience, and we'll tell you where you can get that book here in just a little bit. All right, so let's talk about what you referred to in the book without giving too much of it away as the workplace, the new yeah. workplace ecosystem. Yeah, so this is, you know, and again, it is because of the pandemic and the way it has shifted our perception. Traditionally, when you think of workplace, you think of corporate offices. This has been traditionally all the way this has been. And even before the pandemic, when companies, even though they had remote workers, they still thought of workplace in the traditional sense, mm-hmm. meaning that they focused all of their resources in creating a really great corporate office, beautiful interiors, mm-hmm. productive workstations, break rooms, the works. Whereas those who work from home, they kind of left to their own defenses. And what happened with the pandemic is all of those in the office-based industries, and not those of you who work in radio (laughs) or work, you know, non-office-based industries, we were all forced to work from home. And we realized, oh, my God, we don't have anything that we need. Not everybody had adequate Wi-Fi or the right video conferencing equipment. Worst of all, not everybody had the right home office. People were still, are still today working on the dining room table or on the sofa. And we know that that's not going to keep us productive long term and now that work from home is sustained it is going to be here forever we're not it's not going anywhere it is it is not even the future it is the present and it is the expectation it is we now companies need to now focus on okay well what do you need to be productive because we have to be sustainably productive working from home and that's why there is a now of of perception of what a workplace is and instead of focusing on where employees work they're now focusing on on how you work and what you need to be productive and engaged period regardless of where it is that you're going to be working from yeah i like that i like that a lot all right uh, any tips for people that do set up a home office obviously don't have an 85 inch television within uh with an eyeball view but anything else that you you've seen over the years to help people be more productive at home and stay focused yes I, I would say, first of all, talk to your companies, um, because the thing is, companies have a lot of resources that can help you. And if they're not changing their perception now, help them with it. So get talk to your companies, find out, get an ergonomist, get their company ergonomist or um, the corporate interior designers to help you figure out where in your current home has the best lighting. Have them teach you about seating height and desk height. So if you're still working from your dining room table, maybe you need to sit on a cushion to bring yourself higher so that you have the right desk height. Same thing if you have a window in your room. Where do you put that screen? That's really important. Otherwise, you're going to get eye fatigue. Have them help you figure out where in your home you need to be working from. Okay. I like that a lot. Yeah, not near a big television probably. And stay away from the refrigerator too, right? (laughs) Well, I don't know if you can do that. I can't even claim to be able to do that, so good luck. All right. Uh, Lenny Rivera wrote the book, Workplace Experience. Where can people get it, Lenny? Um, Amazon. It's available on Amazon. There you go. Beautiful. And you can find me on my website also. It's www.workplaceexperience.net. It's experience spelled with an X, so workplaceexperience.net. Well, check it out. Lenny, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Monica, too. Have a great day. You, too. All right. Thank you.